In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use DeFi Llama to conduct fundamental analysis. DeFi Llama is one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal as a cryptocurrency investor, as it tracks stats such as deposits, fees and revenue, and transaction volume for thousands and thousands of cryptocurrency protocols. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick. And as a reminder, although we'll talk about a number of different crypto projects in this video, this isn't an endorsement that you necessarily invest in any of them. These are simply examples to teach you how to do your own research. Now, let's get into the video. To start, you're going to go to the website defilama.com and your dashboard will look something like this. And as you can see, there's a ton of different tabs here, thousands and thousands of different protocols, dozens of filters and toggles. And I'll go through what I consider to be the most important ones in this video, but to go through everything would truthfully take hours. So we're just going to go through the highlights, but this should give you the 80-20 of actually getting value from the protocol. All right, so to start, let's get a quick overview of the website and which sections we'll be looking at. Here on the main page, you're going to have a bunch of individual cryptocurrency protocols. And what DeFi Llama means by protocol here is basically any application that's built using cryptocurrency. So these exist on chains that have smart contracts enabled, and they do things such as allowing you to borrow and lend crypto, liquid staking, decentralized exchanges, those sorts of things. What this doesn't include is any individual blockchains. Those are over here in the left in the chains section. So we'll go through both of these. Overview has protocols, chains has chains. Uh, but so if you're wondering, for example, you say, where is Ethereum? It's not here because these are just protocols. So this has protocols that are built on Ethereum, like Lido, like Aave, for example, but it doesn't have Ethereum itself. Great. And so uh, what else can we see on this front page here? Uh, well, to start, as we scroll down, we'll see the different protocols here on the left and the largest is Lido right now with TVL of $13.97 billion as, as of the time I'm making this video. Uh, and then the smallest, if we go all the way down, well, the smallest is going to be zero. And eventually I believe they do remove things that are inactive, but there's about 3,000, 3,000 on here if you go all the way, all the way down. So everything from $13 billion to $0 and thousands in between. All right, and so what stats do we see here? Uh, well, first we see the category. So you have this category here that has, uh, for example, liquid staking, lending, CDP, DEXs, services, etc. If you want to get a feel for you know which categories are doing well, then then perhaps you want to look at this. Or if you see a protocol and you don't know what it does before you even click into it, you can get some idea where you say, okay, Spark is growing, and you see that that's a lending protocol. Next stat that you see on here is TVL, that stands for total value locked. And if you're not familiar with DeFi, you're not familiar with crypto fundamental analysis, total value locked doesn't really mean locked. It basically just means deposits, right? So this means that almost $14 billion is deposited into Lido. $4.67 billion is deposited into Aave and so on and so forth down here. And so if you see this going up or going down, it's a function of two things. It's a function of the price of assets that are deposited into these protocols. For example, Lido is mostly ETH. So if ETH goes down in price, then you would see the total value locked TVL go down over the past seven days. Likewise, if it goes up, you would see the TVL go up. And the second thing that TVL is a function of is people depositing or withdrawing funds into the protocol. And generally speaking, TVL is going to be the first metric that you look at for any of these any of these protocols. And the reason for that is that, first off, unlike things such as users, for example, TVL incorporates dollar value. So it's very easy to fake users if you want it to seem like more people are using a protocol because you just create a new wallet and you do a wash trading or some sort of dummy transaction. Uh, but there's no dollar value involved. TVL does require a dollar value involved because it's measured in deposits. So for example, if you know you, you can argue about whether the protocol is accruing value from that or whether how productive that money is, but $14 billion has been deposited into Lido. That's just the amount that's been de deposited. Uh, and so and so if you see something that's going up in value, it basically means more money is being deposited into the protocol. And in theory, some of the value from having that money deposited should accrue back to the protocol in some form. Uh, and so that's TVL. And then plus you can use TVL to compare compare different protocols. Next thing you see here is you see fees and revenue. And uh, we'll talk about the difference between those in a second, but this is basically 
what people are spending to use the protocol. Uh, and so, for example, if we see we see that uh, Lido has a lot of fees, $1.37 million over the past 24 hours. Aave has 319000 But then if we go down, we say, okay, Uniswap has a lower TVL than Aave, but actually has far more fees being spent, $8.6 million. So people are spending a lot of money to use Uniswap, right? It's actually, there's a lot of economic activity going on there. Uh, likewise, if you go down, you see that PancakeSwap has 381000 actually more than Aave. Uh, MakerDAO, perhaps that's a better comparison with Aave, has 510,000 compared to Aave's 319,000. And I'm not trying to pick on Aave because it's a great protocol. Uh, but the point is that fees and revenue are measuring something different, right? Because a lot of this TVL here could be stagnant. Uh, it might be earning a very low rate of uh, revenue or rewards for the protocol. Uh, whereas, whereas other activity that's happening could actually be generating a lot of fees. Uh, and so real quick, I'm just going to sort by fees over the past 24 hours. And we can see that there's actually some protocols up here like FriendTech that only have $44 million in TVL, but have a lot of fees coming in, right? FriendTech has more fees than a lot of those protocols that were that were in the top 10. Another one, for example, is MetaMask, the wallet that many of you probably use if you use crypto on chain, uh, is generating $200,000 of fees in 24 hours. Now, there's no way to invest in MetaMask at the moment, but you would see that you say, okay, so MetaMask is uh, it has no money deposited, but it's a highly used service, and that can tell you something about the market. We'll sort back by TVL now. Uh, and then the next stat on here is going to be revenue, and the difference between fees and revenue is that fees are basically from the perspective of the user, and revenue is from the perspective of the protocol. And what I mean by that is fees are what people are paying, and revenue is what's actually accruing back to either the protocol treasury or to token holders. And the most obvious example of this is Uniswap. People are paying a ton of fees, but those fees are going to liquidity providers. They're not actually going to token holders. Uh, whereas MakerDAO, for example, people are paying a lot of fees. All of those fees are accruing to the, to the treasury or token holders. And if you sort by this right now, you'd see over the last 24 hours, for example, MakerDAO is number one, MetaMask is number two. FriendTech is number three, and then you have Lido. And even though Lido is the number one in TVL by far, it's actually number four by revenue over the past 24 hours. And so that can kind of give you an idea of how productive the TVL is on these different protocols. All right, so let's keep it moving. Uh, and we'll go, in, we'll go into a bit more detail on some of these in a second. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of these different filters you have here, they have some preset preset various uh, views you can do. You can go to fees to just see fees, revenue, volume, TVL, or the default here where it shows everything. Likewise, you could filter to one day to just see the one day view, seven days to see the seven day view, and one month to see the one month view. Generally speaking, I actually like the seven day view because things vary so much in one day that Unless you're really into day trading, you know, you're making, you're buying and selling within the same day. This doesn't really tell me that much information about trends or anything like that, because it's going to be so dependent on the market. And honestly, a lot of it's just going to be noise. Seven days, you can start to get a better, better sense of what's actually going on. Likewise, they have this column toggle here, which we're not going to use, but you can use this to manually unselect certain columns if you want. Uh, you can click on any of these columns to filter them, all often sort by seven day change. Uh, the problem that you'll notice when you do this is that the ones that grow the most are ones that are small, right? This one grew by, um, I can't even see, you know, a million percent, something like that, but it's only 24,000 even after growing. So it basically grew from what, a penny? It grew from nothing. So that's not really telling us that much information. So what I'll do is I'll usually filter TVL range to be, say, something like $10 million. And sometimes I'll even go higher. You know, I'll go 50 million, 100 million. And we say, okay, so this one grew by 600%, but it's actually a non-trivial dollar amount. Trader Joe grew by 36%, and it's a non-trivial dollar amount. It's $78 million now. And so, so usually if I'm going to sort by change, I'll use this TVL filter. All right, sweet. So let's go back to... Uh, to total TVL, and we're going to dive in a little more into one of these protocols. I'm going to do MakerDAO simply because it's generating the most fees and revenue, and it's 
been in the news recently. And when you click into it, you see this protocol view that looks something like this. And the cool thing here is they have this chart where you can overlay all sorts of different stats, all sorts of different fundamental analysis for the protocol. And so if you took nothing else away from this video, just know you can look up a protocol here and you can actually, you can find various pieces of information about how the protocol is doing on a fundamental level overlaid here on this chart. You can include the price, for example. So we could say, okay, the, the price has been trending up recently. TVL has been trending down. That doesn't necessarily mean that the price is wrong, but you have to dive a little deeper because you'd say, okay, these are moving in opposite directions. You can add in revenue here. So we'll do that. And we, and now we say, oh, okay, you know, this is probably why price is trending up, right? Price seems to have very little to do with the TVL on MakerDAO. You know, it's not really moving in concert with, uh, with it at all, at least not recently. But if you look here, we can even remove TVL. We say, okay, price and fees are moving together pretty closely for this application, and they actually have been for some time. So, so I'd say, okay, if I'm measuring MakerDAO's performance, I probably want to look at fees because because those seem to be pretty correlated with token price. Now you can also pull in some other stats. So for example, perhaps you want to pull in the treasury balance. You can say, okay, look, this treasury is, their treasury probably includes a lot of maker tokens. So that's why it's moving with it. But we say, okay, their treasury has been trending up as well. You can pull in the number of developers. Generally speaking, I don't find the number of developers to be that helpful, but uh, it could be, an important stat to supplement sometimes for example especially if you saw a major outlier a protocol that suddenly gained more developers that could be a good sign they were doing something again developer commits is going to be similar i take it with a grain of salt because different people might commit at different rates but maybe something that you want to incorporate to get a full view of what's happening with the protocol and, and there's some other stats here as well that, that you again can incorporate uh, and then another useful thing here is you can actually view the audits. So they're not a guarantee of security, but you can click on yes, and then you can get links to the protocol's audits. This is going to be especially important for smaller protocols. And then you can get a link to the official website and the official Twitter. And I like to use this a lot just because there's so many scam websites out there that if I want to go to the official MakerDAO website, I'll just go to DeFi Llama and I'll click on the website here. If I want to go to the MakerDAO Twitter, I'll go to the DeFi Llama and then I'll click on this Twitter thing. And I know that that's going to be, be the correct non-scam Twitter. Uh, and that's the protocol page. Again, super helpful. Uh, highly, highly recommend using it. Next part that you might look at here on, uh, on DeFi Llama is the chains section. So the chains section here is going to be similar, but it's going to be specifically for chains. And so the stats that you see are going to be slightly different because a lot of stats that are relevant for protocols aren't necessarily relevant for chains and vice versa. And you can see here for Ethereum, for example, you have the number of protocols, you have the number of active users, you have the change, and that's the change in TVL, even though it doesn't say. You have the TVL, you have the number of stable coins on the chain, uh, and then you have the volume of DEXs on the chain, uh, and then fees as well. Yeah, and so... Uh, you can again toggle any of these off. Uh, there's some settings, for example, to group layer twos with Ethereum and other chains. Uh, but but this is basically just going to give you a high level overview of where different chains stack up on different stats. And so, for example, we see the top chains by TVL are Ethereum, Tron, BSC, Arbitrum, Polygon. But if we sort by volume on DEXs, it's Ethereum, BSC, Arbitrum, Polygon, ZK Sync, Era, and then Solana. So we can see that some of these chains like Tron have a lot of money sitting on there, but they don't have as much actual uh, activity going on. Uh, vice versa, if we look at stable coins, we see that actually there's a massive amount of stable coins on, on uh, Tron and Ethereum, of course, but we see that this chain has more stable coins than you would expect. Uh, yeah, and then this, so, so this is the chain page. You can click into any of them and it's not going to have the same stats again as uh, as the protocols, but it still has some useful things. So we can look at the TVL as well as DEX volume over time on Ethereum. We can look at the the fees being being paid on that network. So obviously there, these were much higher back during crypto bull run. You can look at the number of transactions on the network. 
So that's pretty interesting, right? Because even though those definitely peaked back in 2021, we can see that those have actually gone down far less than, than TVL did. So that's interesting. And we can see that transactions didn't reach as high when the uh, TVL and price were high, were, were at an all-time high. They actually were higher in this initial peak in 2021. Uh, yeah, and so, so definitely recommend using this for the protocol. Uh, when you click into it, you can also see the, a list of protocols that are on the chain. So something that I'll do pretty frequently is if I see a protocol is growing, so let's, or chain's growing, let's go to seven day change here. We'll find a chain that's, that's uh, growing. And if we go to chains that are growing, say for example, we find Gnosis, right? So we say, okay, Gnosis is up 55%, $127 million. Wow, that's pretty big. Click into it and we say, okay, uh, what's driving the change? And now we see the protocols on Gnosis and we would see pretty quickly that this new SDI protocol, which was just deployed on Gnosis is, is driving a lot of this change. Uh, it accrued $34 million in less than a week. And so, so that's where you can very quickly drill down to which uh, protocols are actually moving the needle on different chains. And honestly, this is most of what you need on DeFi Llama. A couple other useful features that I'm going to go through. Uh, they have a treasury tab here, so you can look up protocols and find what their treasury is. You can also break down exactly how many stable coins, BTC and ETH are in the treasury versus their own tokens. Uh, and then another, proto another page that I'd like to use a lot is this recent tab. This shows you all of the newly listed protocols on DeFi Llama. A lot of these are going to be small. A lot of these are going to be rug pulls. A lot of them just won't work out. However, many new protocols that will work out are going to be here. So I'll often go here just to see what's launching, what categories it's in. We see, for example, that there's a lot of SoFi, that social finance protocols launching recently. Uh, and then you can look at what chains they're on if you hover over them. And, and I'll often look at that just to say, okay, Things are launching on Solana, Base, uh, Beam, Ethereum, Arbitrum, just to try to find some patterns, whether there's one chain that a lot of developers are choosing to deploy on. And that's all I'm going to go over in DeFi Llama. Again, there's a lot more you can look at, but I think just the things I showed you already will get you most of the way there towards being able to do your own fundamental analysis. If you want to learn more about on-chain stats and how to do the research yourself, then I have a weekly newsletter I send out, dynamodefi.substack.com. And here I'll actually highlight what I consider to be the most important stats each week. So rather than you having to look into all of these things yourself, I'll, I'll call out what I see as the most important trends from websites like DeFi Llama, as well as many other resources. And that's all for today. If you want more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.